How's it going, guys? So this is a hyper basic slash past level question for step one. Some of you who are further along in your prep will say, Mike, that last question you made was too easy. Relax. Okay. Yes. Some of you will be further along in your prep and this question is easy for you. But some of you watching this, you need hyper basic shit. Okay. I mean, you're not as far along in your prep. There's a spectrum of you watching this. So it's not my opinion. This is, this is all over the NVMEs for step one. Super fucking high yield. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. Really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Link is down below. Find me on Telegram. Recently created a Telegram group and channel. Links are down below. Now let's start the fucking clip. So two-month history, difficulty sleeping, 60-year-old woman. Uh, she sleeps upright in bed. 20-year history, type 2 diabetes, blood pressure 115 over 70, heart rate 80. She has ankle Edema and jugular venous distension, left ventricular ejection fraction is 35%. Question wants to know the most likely mechanism for her edema. Ejection fraction should be 55 to 70. So this indicates that we have left ventricular systolic dysfunction, most likely due to the long-standing diabetes, which is the most acceleratory risk factor, the worst risk factor for atherosclerosis, decreased coronary artery perfusion, decreased myocardial oxygenation, increased proclivity for left heart dysfunction in the setting of increased preload which will occur when a patient is supine because we no longer have to fight against gravity to return blood to the heart, increase venous return to the right heart, increase preload. That's going to make its way to the lungs and then make its way to the left heart. Left heart says, fuck, uh, we can't handle that preload because it's decompensated. So that fluid's going to back up into the lungs. Okay. Increased capillary hydrostatic pressure. This is the answer on USMLE for anything cardiac. Okay. So why do we have pulmonary edema? Answer, increased pulmonary capillary hydrostatic pressure. Why do we have ankle edema? Answer, increased uh, central venous uh, hydrostatic pressure. Okay. Super fucking high yield. It's a backup pressure. It leads to transidation where you have decreased cells, decreased protein, decreased LDH in the fluid that extravasates. Hydrostatic is an outward directed pressure on the vascular wall. Cardiac failure. In contrast, if the etiology for pulmonary or peripheral edema is nephrotic syndrome, okay, it's renal in origin, or hepatic failure, where the liver cirrhosis, where the liver is not producing albumin, then the answer is going to be decreased capillary oncotic pressure. Oncotic is a retention pressure by proteins slash solutes within a vascular space. It holds on to fluid. So if you, if you have hypoalbuminemia, uh, then there's an increased proclivity for fluid to leave the vessels. Okay, so decreased capillary oncotic pressure, answer for nephrotic syndrome or liver failure, increased capillary hydrostatic pressure, this is the answer for cardiac issues. Now, you need to know that, uh, once again, that pulmonary findings, okay, this is left heart dysfunction, whereas peripheral edema, JVD, hepatosplenomegaly, right heart failure findings, super fucking high yield, okay? Now you say, well, what about... Uh, increased capillary permeability. Why is that wrong? This is the answer for exudative uh, function. Or, okay, so or ex exudative transudation. So this is going to be inflammation. Uh, sepsis can be ARDS, uh, can be uh, pulmonary embolism, even malignancy. Uh, but we're going to have TNF alpha, which causes increased spacing between endothelial cells. And we're going to have uh, fluid leaving the vessels that has high cell count as well as high protein and high LDH, okay? There's many talking points here, as I prefaced with. Uh, staying concise is challenging, but really important you know that left heart failure causes pulmonary signs. Really important you know that right heart failure causes peripheral signs, okay? Ankle edema, JVD, hepatosplenomegaly. Left heart failure plus right heart failure is congestive heart failure, okay? Cardiac, increased capillary hydrostatic pressure, if we have renal or hepatic as the origin, decreased capillary oncotic pressure. You know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.